And since recreational users have no control over the dosage or purity of black market acid, taking it is playing chemical Russian roulette. When these compounds are used by the wrong individual in, um, in unsafe conditions, they have the potential to cause harm. A small minority undergoing a bad trip may not come back. They may not return. They may be launched into a psychotic state. The subjects were aware at all times. Scientists have witnessed these effects from the earliest studies before LSD became illegal. In the 1950s, they realized that LSD, especially given to human subjects in sterile clinical settings, could result in paranoia and delusions. These distortions of reality look similar to those of patients suffering from psychosis. How long have you been here? Been here? 900 years. 900 years? Yeah. That's a very long time. Sure. The medical profession would give LSD in some very rigid, very medical, very kind of frightening uh, mechanical settings, and people would have what were called um, psychotic-like episodes. For decades, scientists used these psychosis-mimicking drugs to temporarily trigger these effects and peer inside the mentally ill mind. Today, David Nichols is using rats to do just that. They're given 160 micrograms of the purest LSD, not just once, but every other day for months. Their behavior is closely watched and documented. After chronic dosing, the rats begin to avoid social contact and reject their sugar water, suggesting they no longer seek pleasure. They move fast and startle easily. Schizophrenics withdrawal from society. They have this social withdrawal. We, we saw the same thing in the rats. They became much more active. They became much more aggressive, and that's another symptom that occurs in schizophrenics. Does this mean that LSD can cause schizophrenia, or does it just mimic some of its effects? There are cases of people who have taken LSD or other psychedelics, and it's precipitated a long-lasting psychiatric disorder in schizophrenia. The consensus in the literature seems to be that that doesn't happen in people who are not uh, predisposed to the illness. That is, someone who would have developed schizophrenia or the illness in any case. The behavior of Nichols' highly dosed rats mimics schizophrenia so well that it's helping his search for a cure. Geneticist Charles Nichols is David Nichols' son and collaborator. He's investigating changes within the genes underlying these behaviors. By understanding how LSD produces its effect at the molecular and genetic level, we could potentially understand mechanisms underlying diseases like psychosis that have very similar overlapping behaviors. If we could go back to the earliest onset of schizophrenia and discover what causes it, then I think we could develop drugs that might arrest it. Mental illness and psychedelic drug use both affect the way the world is perceived. A simple magician's trick shows us why. They call it the hollow mask study. It's all about the way our mind plays tricks on what the eyes see. Dr. Torsten Passi, professor of consciousness studies at the Hanover Medical School in Germany, oversees the test. He has three groups. One is schizophrenic. 
another on psychedelics, and the third healthy and sober. He then asks the participants to look through a viewfinder at an image of a face mask. Then they view a second image which appears to be exactly the same. Can you tell the difference? The pictures which are looking like normal faces, but they are in fact not. Like all hollow masks, one side is convex, facing towards you. And the inside is concave, or hollow. No matter which side of the mask they see, the healthy and sober group sees it as facing towards them, because that's what their mind expects. However, those with mental illness or on psychedelics can differentiate between the two sides the majority of the time. Why? Scientists estimate that the brain receives 11 million bits of information per second, but the conscious mind can only process about 200 bits at a time. To handle that amount of input, the brain connects new information to preconceived concepts. For example, if something is flying beside you in a very high speed, you may think that may be dangerous, you know, but if you can identify with your concept these little tiny bit of perceptual info, you know, into, oh, that was a bird, then it's, there's no danger and you calm down again, it's no problem. By temporarily suspending the brain's ability to connect data with these concepts, psychedelics may decondition the mind. It's as if the filters that we normally have in order to function are lowered so that literally more can be taken in, more sensory impression, more emotional impression, more visual impression, and more access to parts of the mind. For some, this might be overwhelming or frightening.